If you're an architect in a mountain community, there's a good chance that some of the buildings that you design are on sloping hillsides or for that matter, anything with a slope. It's going to cause you problems when you're trying to design the site in 3D for your visualizations. Why do you wanna do that? Well, because it obviously looks really wrong when you have a flat site on a mountain hillside if you're gonna to try to display that in 3D. So today on Colorblind Architect Does Archicad, we're gonna cover how to do a sloping fence, sloping parking, sloping curving gutter, so that you can make your sites look a lot better in 3D. So you're designing on a slope. That's a pretty normal thing to have to do. And you're using a BIM application, in this case, ARCHICAD. Well, the easiest way to design the site work parts to actually model them in is to build it on a flat slab. And, you know, that has its advantages because it's a lot easier. Um, you can use a profiled wall for the curb and gutter. You can use the built-in fence object in the library. Um, you can use the built-in parking object. But what it won't do is get you your slopes. See, when you have a sloping site like this one, it's just not going to look right no matter what you do. So how do we start? How do we do this? Well, let's first start in the floor plan view. In this case, I've already drawn up some simple 2D geometry representing the parking lot, the parking stripes, the setbacks, the property boundary, and also the contours. Now, in this case, I've already put the contours into the mesh. If you don't know how to do that, it's a really great, um, it's a really great tool. When you use the mesh, you can actually select the mesh tool and then magic wand each of the polylines that represent your contours and then select the node, choose the elevate mesh point and make sure that your elevate mesh point is set to apply to all, set the height and repeat until you have yourself a sloping Top, uh, topographical mesh. Now, obviously, that's easy. That's something that you can probably find in other tutorials. The next part is you're going to need to put the asphalt for the parking. So in this case, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and make sure that I have the settings all set up first. In the building materials, let's choose asphalt. And we're going to make sure this is a good and thick one. And set the geometry method to polygonal. And also let's make sure that we change this over to asphalt for our top side surface, because obviously we want this to look correct. And then with that all set up, we can do the magic wand setting, which of course I should end that command. Magic wand setting. And when I've got that, highlighted the polyline representing the parking lot, I can just go ahead and select. Oh, looks like we have the original mesh selected already. Need to unselect that because otherwise it's going to try to add points to that. And then magic wand, the polyline, and voila. We've got ourselves a terrain. Now, of course, in doing that, I had accidentally changed the original terrain to asphalt. So let's just go ahead and correct that and set that back to grass. And now let's go to our 3D. And you'll notice that our asphalt parking is now showing. Now we're going to elevate this just slightly. So I'm going to use the drag command and just drag it up vertically by about a foot or two, whatever it takes to make sure that we've got a fully intersecting mesh. 
Once we have that, we can go ahead and choose our solid, ele our sol solid element operations palette. And we're gonna go ahead and select the asphalt mesh as the target. The operator is the grass. And we're gonna change the operation to intersection, use on attributes and execute. Now, while that's still selected, we can choose the asphalt as the operator, the grass as the target, and change the operation now to subtraction with upward extrusion and click execute. And what that does is now we have a sloping asphalt parking lot that matches the contours of the site. So what do we do next? Well, obviously we wanna have the fence. Okay, I'm gonna do that one first because that's gonna introduce the railing tool. Now, you're probably thinking the railing tool, that's usually used for, you know, overlooking atriums or going upstairs, maybe even rails. In this case, I'm gonna use it to create a fence. Now, that's the great thing about the railing tool. The railing tool allows us to create things like fences. And maybe you already know how to do this, but I'm just going to illustrate it again. So in there, in the railing tool, you're go going to want to, if you already have one, select the correct, uh, the, the correct fence in your favorites, click apply and click okay. Otherwise you're gonna have to go through all the settings. You're gonna have to create one. And that's a whole nother tutorial. I could show you how to do that on another time. Click okay. Now the great thing is our segment associativity and our node associative, it's all associative. We want that for a reason because then we can go ahead and make sure that it's associative to the terrain. And we're gonna go ahead and choose each intersection point where the fence is going to intersect with the actual site. And at those contour lines, because that way we'll actually have the fence following the contours of the site. And let's go ahead and finish that. And you'll notice it is actually following the slope of the site. Now in this case, this fence is sitting outside of our property. So we're gonna go ahead and switch the reference plane or the reference line so that it sits on the inside. And voila, now we have a fence. So we also need some curb and gutter for our parking. So to do that, we're gonna do a railing. Now in this case, I have gone to the complex profiles in the profile manager, and I've already created a curb and gutter. Now, in this case, you can choose for your profiles to be associated, associated with walls, beams, columns, objects, and yes, railings. Now, in this case, you'll notice that the center point, the origin point for this particular profile is at the top of the, um, at the top of the curb and gutter. Y you don't necessarily have to do that. You can do it in many different ways. You're gonna have to just try it out, see which one works for you. And I also suggest create a mirrored version of it. The reason for that will become clear when we draw this in and just, we can go ahead and X out of that. Now, in this case, I've also already created a, pro, a favorite uh, just to save time. So in this case, under railings, I have a curb and gutter. Basically, all this railing is, is the segment is the actual curb and gutter, and it is just the top rail. The top rail is the profiled rail as the site curb and gutter. Now, for top rails, top rails don't really flip back and forth, and that's why you wanna have the ability to make this mirrored or unmirrored. And 
Now let's draw it in. Now, one way to do this is the same way that we did the fence. So we can try starting at this corner and we just go ahead and try to snap to points along that path. But as you can see, it can be a little bit tricky to get the exact right points. And in this case, it may actually be quicker to use the magic wand method in the plan view. So if we go back to the plan view, we can still have the railing tool selected, but this time we're gonna go ahead and hover over that polyline and click. And now our railing or curb and gutter has conveniently drawn itself around the parking lot. Now, obviously it did a complete loop because the, it was actually a closed polygon. We'll fix that in a moment. The first thing that we do, you'll notice that the curb and gutter is actually facing the wrong way. I can show it to you in the 3D. See, it's facing the wrong way. So let's fix that first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and remember how we set a mirrored version of the curb and gutter. We're gonna switch the profile and now, as you can see, our curb and gutter now faces the correct way. Now our next problem is we need this to actually sit on the site. Now, for some of these, for this, you're just gonna grab nodes. So hover over each node, hold and click, and choose this move node option from the pet palette. Make sure that you're locking into the vertical. And then make sure it intersects with your topo mesh. You're gonna repeat that process until you're done. Now, I'm gonna speed up the video while I do this. I stopped right here for a quick second because if you remember this was a closed polyline, polygon, a closed polyline, I mean, and when we magic wanded the curb and gutter, it created a complete loop. Now, obviously, in this case, I have found the point where the two ends of the rails are meeting. So in this case, to fix this, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and move these, these nodes and just kind of delete out some of the extra points so that we can make this correct. And now, fortunately, it happened right here towards the end. And now we're gonna take this point, hold, and choose the pencil to continue the railing. Now let's go ahead and orbit around so that we can see the point that we're trying to hit. We can snap to that point that we're trying to hit. And let's just go ahead and close that. And now we can, over the control line there, we're gonna select the arc, pop that out so that it looks all nice and pretty. And there you go. We have our curb, curb and gutter following the topo. Now, obviously there's a few spots where the topo goes over the curb and gutter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the curb and gutter and use that as the operator. 
select our asphalt parking as the target, subtraction with upward extrusion. This solid element operations palette, we, I'm gonna use it a lot in these tutorials. It's one of my favorite tools in ArcCAD. Let's execute. And now we have a very nice looking curb and gutter that follows the terrain. Now, our next step, we need parking stripes. So let's go back to the floor plan. And to do this, we could try to use the built-in parking tool. The built-in parking tool in ArchiCAD is really great. I, I really like this tool, especially for flat work. Now, in this case, it doesn't really work well for sloping sites. The problem with it is it doesn't slope very well. It doesn't allow you to do, do compound slopes uh, where you have two different angles for lengthwise and uh, sidewise. So the little cheat that we're gonna use is again, the solid element operations. So let's choose our wall tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're on the correct layer. Uh, we're gonna do the single line method. We're gonna choose our reference line location as center. And in this case, I already have a paint building material uh, created, but I didn't create one for white. So in this case, what I've done is I've just overrode the surfaces to be white. Um, the reason for the paint yellow is for the double yellow line on the road that I uh, built. Normally you would just wanna go ahead and create a building object for this. Now with that, because we already have the lines for the paint stripes, created in 2D. Now we can just use the magic wand, so space bar, and just go ahead and hit each one. Let's see how that looks in 3D. Now, I've made these walls 10 feet tall and put them below and above the surface of the topo mesh for a reason. Uh, because this is essentially gonna, we're gonna do the same technique that we did before with the intersect and then subtraction with, um, with upward extrusion. So to more quickly select it, we're just gonna go ahead and use the find and select we're gonna make sure that we have surface enabled. Um, so go to add, choose surface, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and alt click to medicine dropper, the settings, make sure that it says wall and color surface white. Now this works in this situation because these are the only ones with those conditions in this model. So your particular model may vary. You're gonna to need to do what you can do to select it. Either way, we're gonna select all of these walls and we're gonna add them as a target. Now we're going to select the asphalt mesh as the operator and we're gonna change the operation to intersection, click execute. Now that it's done that, let's go ahead and while they're still selected, choose them as the operator, select the asphalt as the target, and now we're gonna do subtraction with upward extrusion and execute. And that now creates the desired condition where now we have paint stripes on the asphalt representing our parking spaces and our disability uh, zebra striping. And now it's looking a lot better. So hopefully this has been a helpful tutorial. Again, I'm the colorblind architect doing ArchiCAD and thank you for joining me. Peace out.